don't, uh, don't take this personally against them. If you have problems with me, just remember, this is my second and last time here at Nebraska CERT. First and only time. If there are any questions, I'll be happy to uh, answer anything you got. And Major, I want to thank you for putting up with uh, everything that I've said. Sergeant, I really want to thank you. And uh, let's all give them a round of applause. These are the guys. You are going to be a department of the Army someday. <laughs> You're going to be the electronics department. <laughs> The Navy has a department, it's the men's department, that's the Marines. <clears throat> I love telling that joke. Because, yeah, there was a Marine telling me that joke one day and I said, boy, I can only tell that joke in the Air Force. <laughs> or I could tell it to the Army. But uh, if there are any questions here, I'd be happy to answer them. Sir. Aren't you making an assumption on your last point about the Russia, Russians owning the U.S. Air Force, that it's all about all the other Yeah, that's a very good question. The question is, uh, you know, is antivirus the only thing that we have to worry about here, or is defense in depth something much larger than the antivirus industry? Um, and I can answer that, and I can tell you that, yes, defense in depth, we're talking about far more than just antivirus software. We're talking about uh, hackers. We're talking about, um, uh, well, hackers would include, you know, like CIA spies breaking the Russian computers, Russian spies breaking into CIA computers. We're also talking about nation states that would be wanting to attack our power grid. We're talking about SCADA. We're talking about all sorts of things. But the antivirus industry at the commercial level is the oldest of the computer security industries. And they command the single most important level of respect that any other organization has. Um, I like to use, um, like, for example, uh, OpenBSD. Uh, OpenBSD a few years ago had a flaw in it. And what happened? Everybody jumped up and down. Oh my god, it's got a flaw. What happens every time your antivirus software fails to detect a virus? You download a security update and you inject it into your PC. Oh, and then you jump up and down for joy. Oh, thank God. You know, thank you for giving an update to your project. Here's Microsoft Bob right here. He doesn't need, well, he has a couple of security products, but every time Microsoft Word has a security flaw in it, Microsoft Word continues to do what it's supposed to do. Antivirus software, if you don't update it, it stops doing what it's supposed to do. Thank you, antivirus industry. That's known as the addictive update model. And it's through this addictive update model, it's through the corporate level that the antivirus industry has, it's simply the single most pliable aspect for any intelligence agency to get into. Now, I named Dmitry Gryaznov at McAfee, and I'm not saying that he's a spy or anything like that. I honestly don't know if he is. He's just a Russian working there. We've had Cubans working at uh, uh, some of the places, Cubans who appear work just long enough to get access to the entire database of viruses, and then, I don't know, I guess they get on their raft and go home. <clears throat> we have, um, we've had uh, Germans come over uh, at the global level, and those guys don't care about countries. I mean, you know, Jimmy Quo will be the first to admit, it's about my company. It's not about, you know, patriotism. And I don't, I don't slam Jimmy in the slightest. Jimmy, I will applaud for at least telling the truth. Jimmy says, it's all about the company here, and I... <laughs> And what the company asks me to do is somebody in my car assist to China. They don't ask me to stop, uh, you know, uh, talking to a guy in Russia. They don't ask me to stop that stuff. So it's good for the company virus industry that they have the best capability to, of, the, uh, uh, of the corporate uh, cyberspace defense. Start with the oldest and least, or least mature. <laughs> the antivirus industry is the least mature of them all. <laughs> Did that answer your question? All right. Who's got another question here? Anybody? Question? We're going to leave early. Did I answer everybody's question immediately? Shocked. They're shocked. <laughs> Is everybody shocked? By round of applause, are you shocked by what I did? No, I'm just shocked. Let's <laughs> <laughs> I paid $61 for those puppets to entertain you. I'm using Dino. <laughs> Sir, I see a hand. Yeah, uh, if, you know, and uh, let, me, let me start off first by saying that I hope my prediction tanks. Why else would I be up here giving you such a shocking prediction? Uh, the question is, uh, if they could gain nearly full oversight of the antivirus industry, what would they do with that oversight? Uh, the logical thing, let me use China as an example. China has an antivirus product separate from the antivirus industry, and it's called Kill. 
that product is all over the Chinese corporate network, it's all over the Chinese military network. Kill, as an antivirus product, sucks. But Kill is a great product when you're the government and you want all of the computing power at your disposal. So what could Kill do? Kill could do anything that you just mentioned. Kill could do reconnaissance on the Chinese people. Kill could do reconnaissance if uh, Chinese people went overseas and logged into corporate networks and, and got a DSL line and tagged in. Uh, Kill can do anything that the, that the Chinese want them to have Kill do. Same thing with the corporate research. My scenarios that I use are this. Um, if I was the KGB and I wanted to send a virus to, I don't know, the White House, and I didn't want the White House to detect it, I make sure that my little startup company over here that controls everything didn't find out about that virus. Nobody would get the information or the information would simply not flow out of them. That's one thing that I could do. Uh, a second thing that I could do is, yeah, I could, um, what could I do? Man, there's so many things, that, man, my head's reeling with that. I could make sure that that product fails at a specific time. If I'm going to launch a, a devastating attack on, who's my enemy if I'm Russia? Uh, the United States. <laughs> Uh, just picking one out of a hat here, uh, I could make sure that your antivirus software failed at a specific time. That, that arm, for research on a virus, McAfee has to do the exact same research. Symantec has to do the exact same research. Everybody has to do this duplicate research because none of them can put all of their research under one umbrella. Umbrella. Want. And if I have control, I have the power to destroy. So, and I mean, that's the definition of terrorism, too. If I had an Al-Qaeda... Uh, front that was, had a couple of million dollars, why wouldn't I do that? But it wouldn't be now because Al-Qaeda is more interested in killing us with a knife than with a computer. But at some point, remember what I told you, I'm not saying that Al-Qaeda is going to be you know, uh, low tech for the whole time. At some point, they're going to get high tech. At some point, computers are going to become so common and so interconnected that Al-Qaeda is going to realize to us. And that's when they're going to start destroying it. And when that day comes, why wouldn't they want to own all antivirus research and development? or uh, control all antivirus research. Did that answer your question? Yeah, eh, you can talk to me offline about that. I'll be happy to keep it. Yes, ma'am. You were in Malaysia just recently. Yes. You were probably killing that 14-year-old that I was talking about who's going to hold the U.S. elections hostage. You know what I heard? <laughs> um, the movie Zoolander is banned there because remember they were going to, he was going to kill the Malaysian prime minister. Oh, yes. <clears throat> so anyway, Zoolander, yeah, the Zoolander was going to kill the Malaysian prime minister. Oh, man. With a computer. Uh, they, were, they tried to break into a computer, didn't they, in Zoolander? <laughs> they did about as good of a job. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am, what's your question? Thank you, Rob, for your excellent presentation and now that you thoroughly depress and, and elicit, um, apart from what you talked about, are there any thought leaders, you know, going back to the idea of the year that they attack? Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, the question is, is, are there some thought leaders or is there even a clique of thought leaders in the computer security community who are really thinking about what's coming in the future? And the answer is yes. Don't be depressed. Uh, there are a couple of people out there. Uh, Jimmy, I think it's a couple of years ago, about the viruses that are coming in Microsoft Vista. That's how far ahead they're thinking in the antivirus industry. We've already, thanks to Jimmy, uh, well, not Jimmy Quo. Jimmy Quo is more of a uh, of an uh, overall thinker. Uh, he's gotten out of the high technical. Uh, Dimitri Graken, um, who else? Uh, Klaus Brunstein's students are really doing some advanced research. Andreas Marx uh, is a really deep thinker at the technical level, at the ones and zeros level. Um, oh, man. And uh, you can get into the, the high thought process. I really do believe that, that uh, Bruce Schneier is a demigod. I love that man. Not in the way you're thinking. I want to have sex with him. <laughs> Line. <clears throat> but, uh, you know, Bruce Schneier, I disagree with Bruce Schneier on a couple of things, but only a couple, two, three, four. I might be able to chop a finger off, and that's about all I disagree with him on. But he's a really good thinker, forward thinker. Schneier's problem is that he works for Counterpain, and every time he pumps something out, he's writing in the name of Counterpain, and you're always hearing about all the great places he's going to go speak, and, you know, Counterpain's fourth quarter profits, and that's why it's, you know, Counterpain's uh, bulletins that they issue every quarter now? Those are no tams. <laughs> Nobody got that except for him and me and you. <laughs> but uh, he's a demigod. Uh, you know, uh, search. Uh, he's a demigod. There's a whole bunch of really good forward. If I was going to hire those people, if I were in charge of this foreign intelligence thing, yeah, I'd hire. I'd hire those guys because those are the real deep thinkers. 
they can they can 